Hi guys, and nice to have you here again, and nice for everyone who's watching today. Today I have a very special guest here, um, Ola Mitsinski, and she is from the sex tech scene. Ola, would you like to introduce what is the sex tag scene? I mean, for you and for most of the guys who are in the scene, it's probably more than normal what it is and what it's, uh, what kind of branches are included in that. But what, in your opinion, is included in the sex tag industry? Um, hello, Anya, and hello, everyone. And um, very thankful for yeah, being your guest today and um and with pleasure <laughs> with the answer and explain what's behind uh, this um um big umbrella of things uh, of a sex tech means sex technology um i'm pretty sure that almost every one of your listeners um has at least one connection to at least one or probably two sex tech products or services in their everyday life. Um, the only thing is that <clears throat> in the common um, outside world, we often don't know that what we use is actually a sex tech. Basically, sex tech by definition, it's a very technology that enhances human sexuality. And by that, it could be the best example, it's a Tinder. It's a big sector of sex and dating apps. That's one of the branches of the sex technology. Um, a super popular, statistically, every third person is or will be soon using dating apps. Um, so that's a very commercial example. Um, following by that, sex pleasure products, sex toys, haptic toys, remote toys, teledotonics, um, third product, as everyone is probably knowing and using it, are audio erotics, um, porn platforms. Those are also categories and segments of what we are working, which is the sex technology. So what brought you into that technology? I mean, were you always up into programming because it's very technical, I, I think, I would assume? Or is it just because it recently came up with that because, well, I guess that's all also very long, an old branch. Um, computer and IT, it always existed since the computer and since internet and since um, that it kind of developed uh, parallel. Well, it has been there and it will be there, but people are not aware of that because they don't have it in their mind that it really belongs into that corner. They usually put it in the corner, oh, it's IT. But as you because said, it is not, IT as well. It is IT, but you make a make a difference in there because it's basically sex tech. Well, first of all, the journey for me started in, I believe, the most natural way as a transition for a professional who works in tech world for over 12 years. So my previous uh, experiences as a data analytic person, um, as a tech startup developer and accelerator developer, was working precisely with tech projects of different varieties for 10 years. And over uh, five years ago, uh, we noticed in the industry that there is a one very interesting angle of a tech just basically starting to happen as a combination and extension of a femtech industry, um, an industry focusing on human pleasure, uh, industry focusing on innovation and human, human pleasure, interconnectivity of humans in their romantic, sexual, and intimate lives. And, um, and that was extremely interesting back then for me as a person working already in that field to, to dive deeper and to, to enter this world and to see what's really there. And the six years ago, it was, as we call in tech, a blue ocean, which is the space that everything will happen. There's a lot of areas that are not covered. There's a lot to discover. And that was super exciting and interesting for me. Um, and back then we had, we had, of course, companies manufacturing, designing and engineering pleasure products like sex toys. We had um, beginning of the uh, sex education and platforms. We had first sex dating apps, but 
we didn't have what we have today. We also had examples of uh, innovation in the area of robotics. So back then, the most innovative artificial intelligence system based was Harmony Sexbot, not Alexa. That was the time. And that was the most exciting why, uh, for me personally, why I wanted to enter there and to combine my um, previous experiences in the professional life, but also to match make with my own personal level on the, of, a, of a person who always had interest in exploring herself sexually and the person that uh, was identify herself by her own kinks and fetishes and being open about that and, and being actively involved uh, as a feminist for many years and a lot of sex positive organizations and groups and collectives. So that was for me the perfect match, you know, on one hand to extend the technological innovation and, and on the other to match with my own uh, personality and my own needs. Sure, and also your own interests and everything you basically learn from that one industry. And now you can combine both because, in well, I guess normal IT is really more um, a male thing. Like people really tend to lose their feminine side because as soon as I started working with um, tech people, especially in India and stuff like that, it was so, they were so focused in their own world, all day programming, 24 hours they were on, 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 on the computers and it was always computers. And I was like, I didn't understand that word except of zero and one. <laughs> and so was, was that then the time in, for six years you decided to um, create and found your own company or was it later? Um, the company was founded five years ago. Okay. So that was pretty much really one year after me, after I decided to study the industry, when I entered the industry, when I started to interview a lot of, of my future colleagues and, and the partners. And, and I was looking for, for the answers of why this industry is so decentralized, why there is not even one functioning source of truth, what to do, who to ask for help, where is the mentoring, where is access to funding, where are the accelerators, where is the ecosystem, there was no, there was nothing. Um, everything that tech industry has structurized for decades, the funding behind, uh, this was all that sex tech uh, could just look and watch and wish that this will happen to us one day. Therefore, um, the journey was never easy uh, for any of the uh, entrepreneurs working in that field. But I think that's why it's so excited because it's so decentralized because it's so much to do. But what, did you have the same experience when you started in that industry five years ago that people were laughing at you? Are you never gonna make it in that business? It's gonna never last. Like it's still a taboo topic. Um, you as a female IT entrepreneur um, starting your own company in that kind of business. I mean, if you look now and people start their business in that industry or no matter if it's sex related, people put you in a certain corner. I mean, the investors might laugh when they do not understand the structure of clitoris, but they won't laugh when they see $30 billion industry. And I, I don't need to... Um, going with explanation of you know overcoming my own shame on the shame of my industry in the mainstream when first of all everyone has sex mm -hmm. everyone's sexual identity <laughs> existence um people do have sex people will have sex and uh and people are digitalized their lives completely um it's 10 years of a journey when wellness wellness tech proved that we love to make measure everything we love to measure how much we sleep what we eat um you know what type of yoga we want to do it means that we digitalize our health there was just a very one step to prove that now we're going to digitalize our sexual health as well yes, and I um saw an article where someone invented a, a toy a pleasure toy where you can track on your like you can basically train your pelvic floor and next to it you just play a game on your on your mobile phone i'm like okay i put i have pleasure and at the same time i play with my vagina and look at a screen well 
Uh, practically every product on the market that is um, technologically developed in terms of pleasure products is connected to some sort of app uh, with an open API or not. Uh, the applications uh, allowing you to play with your partner remotely from whatever place in the world they are at the same time. They allow you to play with multiplied partners, if you like. They allow you to make the online orgies, if you like. They allow you to trace your organs, pattern your orgasm, and design the vibration that you prefer and choose the most preferable ones, or even to design your own preferred vibration. So we live in the age when our sexual lives are also fully digitalized, and that really opened the gate into something that was just beyond the point of recognition even five years ago. That's amazing. What do you think will, will change in the next couple of years? I mean, when you see how rapidly it's going to change, even now it's going faster and faster that people are exploring that industry, make it more modern, that schools are waking up, like everyone is exploding like, like, like spring. I mean, do you think it will increase more the next couple of years? And we see the increasing of technology in every area of the sexual wellness, health and, and uh, intimacy and, and the romantic lives by, by the products that are on the market. And, and there is many predictions. There are the predictions about the virtual reality in the metaverse taking over the big role into our future, future communication and the future uh, romantic lives. There are predictions based also on uh, times of COVID that proved that interconnectivity became to be number one thing for the last two years. Um, the long distance relationships that are also, of course, big part of our um, modern days. And there has to be a solution of how to maintain those relationships in the time when we cannot physically exist with each other. So the modern solutions are always the answer to what society is going through at this particular moment. And, um, and therefore, those uh, products are tried to be compatible to those needs. Um, it's really hard for me to point one branch that will be standing out of different as example that something crazy will happen that I don't know we will be replaced by autom automated AI or that we will be you know having some black mirror scenario happening in our lives I think it's not going to be that futuristic it's not going to be cyberpunk sexuality it's going to be more about self-education self-pleasure education it's going to be about removing shame and stigma from everyday life and that will break the wall to to the future of a sexuality when when the stigma and the shame will be removed from the marketing when when the buying a pleasure toy will be so fucking normal like buying the yoga mat yeah that's, when you go that's to walmart and yeah. you take yeah. the toy among the toothbrush that's the future that that's yeah. that's yeah. where it's going and the commercialization of the sexuality and um and and put it on a mainstream discussion. That's what I see as an as a upcoming trend. Definitely. Do you think it's, it's going to take decades or do you think that will go fast, that the branding and that it's going to be really normal? I mean, if you see how we, we thought for 10 years, all social media is not going to be that important. And today people are creating so much money with it. It's uh, it created new jobs, whole new categories in each kind of area. Um. I am expecting this industry to grow really, really fast as it really started five years ago from the places then there was not so much uh, back then compared to what what products, what solutions and what entrepreneurs we have uh, on the market today. It's just really incredible. And it's also the shift of a gender understanding. You know, even 10 years ago, you would you would uh, look at a discussion about the gender, like it would be completely different place. Right now, and partially thanks to the fact that millennials brought this topic first time in a more open way. And now Gen Zers are doing amazing, amazing uh, future thinking, forward thinking and deeply critical job for society to speak about the gender in a very neutral way. Um, this makes me think that pretty much very soon we're going to have more and more um, 
open discussions about uh, what's feminine, what's masculine. Um, um, the woman will will be less and less desexualized or hypersexualized yeah. in the mainstream marketing by their everything by age position race that's what we got still but this is going to be changed uh, in a positive way in my opinion since we are having more and more these discussions the big brands are noticing that there is a huge need of gender neutral uh, language inclusiveness and by that they also started finally to hire people of of those minorities uh, in the positions in their company that they actually have voice and they have real influence of how to create this branding and marketing. That's nice to see, definitely. Do you also think that the crypto and crypto payments or in general digital payments would also move getting involved in this industry? Because at the moment you have it more that people are trading, investing, but I, I personally see that we totally include it as a whole payment solution as well in there especially nowadays with the whole situation on the world well i i personally believe that <clears throat> the power of tech uh, the, the power be, be behind the tech is to reduce the frictions and to simply give power to community to give a power to the people and um, by that to set up the high standards of uh, promoting transparency and equality and and here when we speak about the cryptos we 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 see the 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 uncensored world that is opening thanks to crypto thanks to blockchain decentralized data that helps f first of all to to remove those double standards as we observe with the process uh, payment methods and for example adult industry and 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 uh, being very unfairly treated with uh, unfair rates for the transactions just because um, a person is selling adult content on OnlyFans or different platform designed for precisely that content when we understand that companies are which are offering this type of entertainment are double priced by standard process payment uh, processors uh, like visa mastercard paypal and so on so i do believe that uh, cryptos first of all tokenization of of uh, adult content is already well known process and it's 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 something that can reduce this risk and uh, as we observe now the all nft market um it just comes to the to the point when when this content can be finally in my opinion free from censorship and it can be treated in a more equal way do you think that the whole technology like nfts blockchain i'm not that in too much involved how mm -hmm. it is built and how it can make the the world more secure but what it understood it is definitely something which can change and make the industry also more secure because that's what people always say it's like it's never going to be a secure um, industry especially if you sure you will always have the people who do shit with it and to do criminal things with it but I in my personal opinion think it it could be also a chance well the blockchain technology is it's actually the answer to 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 that if you decentralize data and everyone has transparent access to this data and see the transaction goes from a to b and there's no third parties involved well that's already a huge step towards the transparency and that's a huge step for not just sex tech or adult business but basically um, voting systems for example uh, we something that you cannot corrupt, something that you can't lie about, something that it's just really clear who's paying for what to who and which amount without anyone being involved in between, that's already a huge step towards the, the future transparency. And for sure, it's going to help a lot uh, in, in our industry. Do you also think that in this kind of part, not just the technical part, and also the whole blockchain and metaverse and NFTs, people just have no clue well they just think they um take that topic and understood it by just reading two or three articles but it takes time to really understand and jump into it it's mm -hmm. not like reading a book because it's so complex and yeah. technology and programming all the time so do you think we should just talk more about it and really spread that awareness that it's not a bad thing well it will be the well, future 
I'm very much against the situation that uh, a that there is no social discussions about uh, implementing of a new technology. It's not happening that there is some sort of referendum for whatever society organized from the governmental level asking you as a citizen of this world whether you would like to be in metaverse, whether you would like to use blockchain, whether you would like to have this new technology, AI systems scanning your face when you are just passing by your streets and there is a face detector pointing at you. Like, do you feel safe with that? This is the, the, the big ethical issue with implementing any technology in this world that we as a final users basically have not enough knowledge how this technology works, what it means to us, uh, what can be the consequence of this technology? We do not know if there have been enough tests done, and, you know, what were the results, but this technology is tested on us. It's tested by Facebook, it's tested by Microsoft, it's tested by big giants, and we are just the users at the very much end of this chain, not really, you know, reading those terms and conditions and not questioning that. Um, so there is not enough discussion about what technology has as an impact for our general being living, whether it's sexuality, whether it's intimacy, whether it's banking or whether it's a uh, jurisdiction. So you think people are just taking it blindly and because someone is inventing it and says, okay, we're going to have that now, we're going to promote that to the people, we use that in our industry and then it will spread out and people will take it. And th those people who think it's, um, they have no clue about it, well, maybe they are having fears or maybe they are um, thinking further and jump into those fears and think about the, um, what's what it can have an effect on us or future children or whatever. And then they mm. basically took in the beginning against it. So do you think we need to have more awareness to that or should, well, people who invent that and implement that in our society start before and making kind of getting together and say, okay, that's the technology. That's how it works. That can be the effect. That's the pros, that's the cons. And that's how it works. Well, it should be done on both sides. I think, being the digital creator, create creation, being the living in digital world, it's already a personal responsibility for you and yourself to ask yourself a question, whether do you want to use this product or not? Um, obviously, when you install yourself first time on Tinder, you didn't know that the company will actually have a full right to sell your data. You didn't know that even when you delete your a personal um, profile, it's still going to be there. Um, you didn't know that your location will be traced. You didn't know a lot of things because all you wanted to do was just to swipe left and right. Um, obviously, all those uh, closures, legal closures, are into terms and conditions um, that are probably legally registered in the, in the, in the US. Um, probably they do also matching with GDPR law in Europe, but the terms and conditions are something we do not ever bother. And, um, and it's hard, you know, it's, it's, it's super hard to, to sit uh, and think and question and, 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 and to dive into details of, of whatever digital product, uh, because otherwise I guess you would spend all your life just reading terms and conditions. Definitely. I mean, you know, um, not even I do that. I mean, I just no jump fun. right into it. And then I was like, okay, I either know that they're going to track my data or otherwise it's not going to work. Or do you well, in person think different about those terms? You could also, you know, again, because there is no uh, tech education from the perspective of understanding uh, how each technology work on on you as a as an ending user there is no debates there is no public discussions webinars for society to to be more aware um this gap it's actually a re real dangerous place and um there should be some sort of even basic support of uh, teaching societies that every single time the third party company is involved into whatever big data 
it might be a problem. The fact that you need to use Facebook to register to some of the major dating apps should concern you. That should be your first red flag. Why do I need to transfer my whole data into the platform A from huge monster platform B and what's in between? Who's going to give me a guarantee of protection of my payment details? You know, less data given, then the bigger security is promised. So I would always advise for, um, if you just guys listen to this, to first of all, check how many steps you have to do before you decide to put yourself on one of the dating or sex apps. Um, what process payment is operating uh, your, your data? Um, what third party is showing up there to sign you up? Is it your Gmail address, I mean, whatever, Outlook ad address, or you also have to be connected to one of the social media platforms. So those type of questions we should be, you know, asking ourselves, firstly, before we actually put ourselves into this ocean of digital experience. Did you do, or for your private needs, did you ask yourself those questions, or do you also sometimes think, no, I just jump in and use those platforms, or are you... The more you jump into that and the more you learn about that because you studied it and you worked in the whole industry, you become more aware of yourself as well in private that you, whenever you use something new, that you think, okay, it has a good thing because something is changing, but you also on the, on the, on the other side have the thing in mind, do I really want that for myself? having all the data, in um, especially metaverse or especially uh, those whole NFT thing, well, it you know, brings dating to a next level. I mean, you yeah. virtual, you put a, a um, I don't know, is it glasses or whatever you have there <laughs> on, and then you jump into the computer and then you just make move. I mean, you know, the, the good part of my work experience is that I work with those brands directly, mm -hmm. that uh, 95 of those companies that we worked since the last three years, um, and they're a very different scale and glo globally recognized brands are the people that I have first contact to. Um, and I study their product and I study the structure of their product and I study their tech side and I study their also marketing side. Uh, therefore, um, I cannot say that those, um, those, pr those uh, product, products are keeping no secrets in front of me. Of course they do, but I'm definitely more, uh, more um, careful and, and more strategically planning my any move into virtual space by knowing that the products can also have like vulnerabilities therefore um i would rather you know keep my nudes in a safe way than post them on the dating app um that i wouldn't do for sure um but yeah of course everything depends on the impulse you know and also everything depends on what you want to consume and if it's particular porn platform and I know that this platform is one of my clients and I know who designed this platform and I know the CEO of this platform I feel super safe but this this is just me I'm only really exception you know I can I can though point out the platforms and and the products that I can tell by by knowing how how the design of the process of creating this product went that there are safe uh, or safer spaces than the others um, therefore um I also, you know, it's my everyday bread. It's also that um, I very often do not enjoy those products sexually or, or uh, in terms of fulfilling my own fantasies because um, I'm no longer looking on the content. I just look on the, you know, on the UX design uh, sometimes. Therefore, it's like pleasure for pleasure, but it's still more looking from the business side than for a pleasure side for me. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that can sometimes be really frustrating when you look onto those platforms and think, oh, that should be pleasure. And you're just uh, tr jumping into it's like, how is it built up? How is the programming? How is the marketing? Yeah, but exactly. That's, <laughs> but that's interesting. I mean, that's what, what makes you loving your industry. And that's how you grow and how to gain your experience out of that um, technologies. What do you think about um, the whole thing for the youth. I mean, they all have uh, handies, they all have mobile phones. It's so easy for them to get connected with that. Do you think they should, or parents should be having more an eye on what the kids do? Or do you think it's 
there's not really a um, well danger mm -hmm. or something they can can get it getting lost. That's what it was my opinion, mm -hmm. especially with metaverse, that they lose the kind of um, feeling for reality. I mean, they jump into that and then they're gonna have a, a whole new avatar, how they look like, how they. Uh, well, probably they can change that avatar every day, every second, and really drift into that kind of world. Um, you know, um, as a mother of 15 years old um, son, I can tell you that everything starts with the parenting education and school education. And if that sucks, then don't expect porn to educate your kids about sexual health. Um, and... Um, we both I, I believe that at least my generation and a lot of people I know around me more or less my age we never experienced uh, sex education at the level that would give us any fruitful knowledge and equip us to understand sexuality and go to the world and you know and start our um, exploring um, so the first thing is that the parents don't even know how to educate their kids because they, they themselves, they were lacking of the basic of the education. As we, as adults, we have massive problems to communicate our sexual uh, expression between partners. Then imagine how hard it can be often for parents to educate kids when they have no tools, they have no support, they have no knowledge. There is a shame, there is a stigma, there is a religion sometimes. There are different of other, you know, blocking you situations in life that you do not have chance to educate yourself and your children. Um, and that's a big problem. So I always say, to not look at the technology as some monstrous, again, black mirror scenario and our kids, you know, going to be locked in their rooms only with avatars and the only sex they will have with flashlight and porn. This is this is not the future. The, the connectivity is always the base human need. We have six senses. We are not designed by nature to have just uh, two senses of seeing our laptops and hearing the music. Otherwise, we would just die. <laughs> that would be end, basically. Extension moment would come just from that. Therefore, we are naturally equipped to touch, to sense, to smell, to interact, to laugh, to have sex with, and then it comes to have human human interaction. But the whole source of information about sex is just a pile of shit. And that's the biggest issue that, you know, when I look at the educational program here in Germany, I can say that it's actually interesting that there is diversity in this program that kids from age of 14 to 16 are, are learning about um, the gender equalities, the differences between uh, gender roles and their own genitals, the STD and STI. And my son just basically two weeks ago was, you know, having the exams of the sexual health, which is actually very important. It's critical. But then it's, it's one of the examples that are working in this educational system, but they're not working in others. And then we have a bunch of young adults entering their adulthood, being completely washed by what the sex could be because the only experience they took from porn, which as we know, can be actually very educational. And there's um, a lot of pornography that it's healthy and that it's also healthy for young people, but this is something that's still very niche. Therefore, um, the sex education, it's, it's my, in my opinion, that, that's the base. And, and then when this will be fixed and then when our young, beautiful adults will be you know, equipped with this knowledge, then maybe we could worry a little bit about spending too much time on Metaverse. That's so nice that you said that because I think everyone who's listening to that and hears that has now two sides. First of all, the side and few of you as an expert in the IT branch, in the sex tech industry, and also as a mother. And as you said, that we are not built as just sitting in front of a computer and as the movies are, we are just living, well, we can live with um, KI and the whole parts but we still need to have the social life, the connection. And that's what we missed out the last two years with, with Corona, definitely. And sure, sex education is the base. That's what I always keep telling people. 
what is in your opinion feminism? I mean, so many talk about feminism today and put it uh, out there and they tell, oh, I'm totally a feminist person and body positivity. And um, But do you also think that even now, I mean, feminism is not that old, um, that people understand it wrong? Um, you know, I, I'm certain that the feminist has always, very subjective definition of the person that wanted to explain what it means to you. Yeah. And uh, for me, feminism is an equality of rights for every gender, for every minority. It's a support for reproductive health for women and the people who identify themselves as a woman as well. It's, it's basically the perspective on how we perceive the the gender these days and and to 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 be equal to be to be equal in you know no matter which country you live no matter how you identify yourself and to be free to identify yourself the way you want to be identified and be called the way you want to be called this is for me the feminism that's nice that you said that. I totally agree to you that everyone can have his own opinion on that. But even there, sometimes people put out a wrong picture of totally different things. And especially I notice the youth, they just take it up and think, oh, that's now how it should be, instead of exploring and trusting their self instincts. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, this is again the, this entire discussion, which is ongoingly changing with the with the, with the gender shifting since the last decades. I mean, um, if if we just even look at the statistics, we know that I don't know if the statistic is still accurate that one at ten person for sure is not heteronormative. But I'm pretty sure there is a lot of more to it right now when we are more and more identify themselves freely as a non hetero personality as a, as a you know, um, be personality and, and whatever, or oh, just a queer personality or transgender personality. And, um, and they become to be critically important to notice that and to have rights to, you know, we live in 2022 and, and I believe everyone has a holy right to feel themselves who they want to be and, and live the life they want to be under a name or a pronoun that they want to choose. Definitely. And also to speak up and speak out what they think about it and not getting put in a new corner or in a, in a, um, somewhere else where people say, why, why is that your opinion? Because we live in a free country. We live where we can talk freely about our opinion and about topics and about all those kind of things, which I really love, especially in sex tech or especially in that big field where it needs to be discussed. Do you also discuss those kind of pros and cons and the whole development in, in, in your branches? I mean, do you talk about how, about the fears, about the youth, how it can develop, how, as you said before, the terms and conditions which people are not really educated? Um, from the perspective of what we are doing, we are working with brands and businesses. So my experience is very little to educate um, um, and work with the final users. Um, we, we are not B2C product, which means that our main clients are those who are actually producing, manufacturing, engineering those products. But yes, of course, we, we do have uh, discussions among the professionals from our industry to which direction we are going. That's why we organize this annual conference every year in Berlin for um, all the professionals from the industry, whether they work in and, and this segment or that segment, whether they sell, 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 sell and manufacture toys or robots or apps or platforms. Um, or working in e-commerce or marketing on R&Ds to get together and to, to discuss the future trends and to discuss the future possibilities. And we all try at least speak the same language to understand that once you remove the shame from the landscape, then everything can go to great business. Yeah. Um, and that's the direction of how this industry is going because when you start to commercialize pleasure, when you start to make it more normal, when you put it in the mainstream, uh, and you, when you finally start to label pleasure as a category of the wellness, then it just becomes to be very easy to swallow for society. It's no longer this, you know, pleasure that's just 
connected to dirt or something uh, sinful or something that you should be ashamed. And, and we are, as a society, as you say, yes, we can speak about pleasure, but in the matter of fact, we don't. Uh, they're just places in which we feel more safer to, to speak out. And maybe those are circles of our friends or maybe communities online or maybe specific communities when you feel safe, but it's not still a topic that we are discussing pleasure in you know, morning breakfast TV. It's not that you, you know, have this, uh, topic uh, ongoingly on the on the mainstream media. I mean, the media are promoting the two types of the sexuality. So yes, we do have this body positiveness trends, which I really, you know, think it's great that it started to be like that when a lot of brands are, are promoting the every type of and shape of a, of a body and, and, and the gender and, and the sexual orientation, and that should go this way. But we are still do not talk about pleasure that exists in its own terrain, because pleasure it's still very much mixed with reproductive health. So it's you know it, it's still oscillating the same long story. Um, sex is for making babies, <laughs> and that's the result of the of the sexual life um, reproduction. But hell no. That's why we have contraception. I mean, there's still a lot to do in the terms of contraception, a lot. And this topic is just really underinvested dramatically and, um, and, 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 and definitely needs more, more light to it. But that's, that's, that's the whole point of, of finding the pleasure in pleasure to, to also be you know, more openly uh, sharing your experiences. But once this will be category as a just self-care, as a self-wellness then I do believe it's going to be a way easier and you know even when you look at Netflix productions those days it's, it happens sometimes <coughs> I'm sorry that uh, pleasure product brands are um, I would say trickly promoted into the marketing strategy as a sponsors of you know some shows. So it's it's actually great when you see the the main protagonists and the characters of your favorite series just having some five minutes of pleasure with with a dildo of a brand that you like. I mean, of course, it's product placements. Of course, it's like you know not what you really would like to. See see being too much but it's very new that uh, the pleasure products entered the mainstream that uh, celebrities are are also promoting the pleasure products on their Instagram that it becomes more and more and more normal and more um, discussable in the public space so um, more of those examples we definitely need to to change this landscape but that's a start. That's where everything starts. Just start with something and then it will come more and more, as you said. And one day it will be as normal as you buying a yoga mat and having your toothbrush and your uh, toys uh, lying in the bathroom. Well, for my kind of <laughs> person and people I work around, it's kind of normal. Like we have all our sexes around the whole uh, apartments or in our bathroom or whatever. And it's it should get normal for others too and don't feel shame and guilt for having self-pleasure. I mean, it's a normal thing, not just seeing sex as making babies and just um, go with the old <laughs> traditional way and, and looks. And I'm, I'm sure the whole industry will open more up. Do you also yeah, think definitely. that... Do you also think that people who are... Um, specialized in that industry still have trouble doing some marketing of course because so many big companies have it in their terms and condition I mean that's what I see and when I started with my kind of um, not even just with sex coaching but in the beginning when I started Facebook and Instagram and I'm sure I knew that it is all in the terms of conditions whenever I show some nudity and stuff like that mm -hmm. or people think it's too too harsh they just block me and my whole account get blocked or it get deleted or whatever um, that it is still a uh, I don't know why people are too much on it because sure you can't control it then either you block it out the whole way because there's always parts where too either hardcore or too let's say yeah you always will have kids in all those platforms well first of all the consequences of of the of the shadow banning and the and the 
uh, censorship of the major platforms um, are actually very bad for society. I mean, the double standards of how this actually is already executed are just really, in my opinion, ridiculous. As if it's absolutely okay to, uh, for example, promote the erectical dysfunction pills and pharma solution, but it's absolutely not okay to showing the naked nipple of a breast of a mother feeding a baby. And yeah. that is already recognized as a you know red alert for algorithm to kick you out. Um, those algorithms were created in a theoretically a very um, a tricky and sneaky way based on this FOSTA FOSTA law to protect youths uh, um, in theory from um, being exposed towards the adult content. But the adult content do not want those users. The, those platforms, they do not want the kids. The kids won't pay for this content and they have zero of interest of show, showing them their product. Um, it's absolutely um, terrifying how, how this uh, goes in terms of uh, lack of social discussion again of what's what's acceptable what is not acceptable this popular you know mem when uh, there is a naked torso of a male and naked breast of a woman just next to it and that's good and that's not good we started to question ourselves so what's actually enough what's what's risky uh, which part of my body as a female person because in, in this case, let's be honest, we're talking about precisely in nudity of females and objectifying the woman and telling them that this type of content is already porn. Yeah. So again, zero discussion of whatever sense. Uh, is there any management center? I'm, I'm just trying to imagine, seriously, like I'm trying to imagine who the fuck have decided like which part of my body would be recognized by this algorithm to be porny, or which part or maybe in which position it wouldn't be. You know, what, what would I have to do to, to play with the algorithm? And because of that, we cannot sustain our business safely. Because of that, a lot of our um, digital activities also as a sex education activity is just banned from the space our industry um obviously uh, suffers a lot from the shadow banning and and, and the blocking and the, and the censorship and our marketing activities therefore of course we also need to look for different solutions for for platforms and places that will be uh, less rigorous uh, for us for uh, for even newsletter platforms that will allow us to send the, whatever content we want to send to people who and that's important agreed to receive this content from us it's not it's not that you know um, the companies are sending a spam to to whatever free data they stole from whatever database it's the people who decide consciously as adult people to subscribe the channel pay for product they have rights to be there they have rights to feel safe and and also they have right to be a community that discuss openly a sexual life and intimate life on the internet. But what happens those days is that all this discussion will go even to a deeper underground places because we can't even uh, promote uh, content that is sexually educative. Um, <laughs> But do you yeah. think, do you think, because on one side, well, when the more I study marketing, especially also for my business, I realize sometimes, well, most of the content and marketing, let's be honest, work with the pain. And that's what I sometimes don't understand. Do they love to have those algorithms because pain sells more? And if they would put it away, they basically would open it and say, okay, we can empower the woman, we can empower the body positivity, we can, uh, like, as you know from media, how do media work nowadays? Newspaper, they work with fear. COVID, they work with fear. Uh, how they promote news in television and Netflix and wherever. Most of the time, either they show just the, the nice side and everything is shiny and glimsy and they don't really show the other side because they think, oh, people should feel good. They want to transport good feelings. That's why they probably just show it like that. 
I think that's just a you know example of how all the algorithms working to polarize societies in general. So whether you are designed to see the feed that is shown you just because based on your basic interest and clicks and your friends and whatever your friends see it's the whole world you're going to see obviously you're never going to see a content suggest suggestion of a person you do not agree with the world views. this is not how the social media has been created and you are not going to buy the products mainly that you're not really in the first category of a consumer so i believe this machine was designed in a way that we, we will talk to people that we like. We're going to share the views that they share. We're going to see what it's shown us to see as the only way, possibility to stay in our polarized bubble. And then in the end, we go to Netflix to watch what Netflix recommend us based on the algorithm. We will never find something more interesting. Or if we would like to have that, we need to add extra work. But this was not designed the way to make us being active. It was designed us to be in a way um, in a safe category as a consumer. So the Netflix tells you what to watch, the eBay tells you what to buy, the Amazon link is already there for another product of the product you have been, you know, just clicking two weeks ago on the Facebook because it is all super connected and it meant to be that way. It meant to be the five major giants in the world taking the the simple control over what, what the consumer think, feel, or where where is the end of your freedom of the personal choices? Because maybe one day you will take this as the whole world as it is without questioning, without questioning that there could be maybe different porn platform than the mind geek platform offers in the world. Maybe it's also you know interesting to dive a bit into something else. Maybe there's different niche platforms of e-commerce offering sell of this or that. And maybe Netflix is, Netflix is not the only one source of the entertainment. But unfortunately, uh, I think to answer your question, you know, that's that's how the world digital world is polarized. And, and this is a huge risk. It's huge risk for democracy. It's huge risk for voting systems. It's, it's a huge risk for actually uh, the safety and the protection and and in the end it really dictates who holds the power that's true <clears throat> but what is your wish for the future for the whole sex landscape and sex tech industry um my great wish for our industry is that um like i mentioned a couple times during this talk we will become uh, absolutely commercialized and mainstream products that uh, the sexual wellness will be same recognized as a mental health as a physical health that people will more, much more often go for sex coaching and sex therapy as they also recognize the same series as any other uh, mental support because they suffer of anxiety or anger or uh, or depression that societies will understand that the sexual health is same important as physical and as holistic and as a, as a mental because it is and and that's that's what i wish for for not just my industry you know but in general for people to to take better care of their sexual self to to explore themselves in a, in a safe spaces without judgment without stigma um, and obviously of course i also wish that my industry would find this middle way to reach the people that at this moment we cannot reach. Uh, as I still see my industry to be luxurious industry uh, for a lot of societies. Um, and, you know, not everyone um, is, uh, is just in the condition to pay 200 euro for 200 euro or 100 euro for um, fancy sex toy. Um, and there's a lot of... Uh, barriers uh, with uh, exclusivity uh, in our industry as well. Uh, therefore, I, I hope that uh, in the next decade, the products will, will develop to the position that it will be absolutely reachable and accessible by, by everyone. That's nice that you said that, because that's also why I do that work and really to spread more awareness and to exactly. really make people feel that it is normal and that it is a, a future, not a future topic 
which become more important and it has to do with your health it starts here it starts here it starts how you feel how you react well it's just about self-pleasure and wellness and self-being and holistically getting more aware of your own body and pleasure of course and thank, thank you, you for so doing much. this job as well thank you so much for having you <laughs> i learned so much about the tech industry <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Thank you too. We post all the links down in the in the Great. box to find your your new projects and what's Amazing. coming up.